All right, everybody, it's Carlos, Carlos Carlos with Tobias Fox from Newark S Science and Sustainability. And right. he's going to tell us about his program, all the, it's got a lot of parts to it. Um, I only know a few of them. So he's going to break it down and talk about sustainability and community. Right. All right, so I'll just uh, start off by basically basically uh, introducing myself and then introducing um, the organization that I founded uh, back in uh, 2013, July. Mm -hmm. uh, so my name is Nor uh, excuse me, my name is Tobias Fox, founder and managing director of Nork Science and Sustainability, and um, we advocate for the localization of food and energy production. Uh, and we do this by way of uh, hands-on educational programs around urban agriculture, uh, renewable energy, uh, wellness and nutrition, uh, uh, and eco-art. Yeah. So uh, in regards to urban ag, mm -hmm. um, uh, the cool thing about Nork is that they have an Adopt-A-Lot program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a way to kind of minimize illegal dumping uh, where residents are able to claim some type of ownership to these uh, vacant properties uh, through the city's Adopt-A-Lot program. They adopt a vacant lot for a dollar for the year uh, with the purpose of developing it into some type of communal green space. So I took full advantage of this by adopting, uh, or in the past I've had three uh, vacant lots that I've transformed to gardens, but now I currently manage two vacant lots um, or two city-owned properties, I should say. Uh, within the city's adopt lot program uh, and manage two community gardens. So um, not only do I use this as a means to um, give local residents more access to uh, freshly grown produce, um, but I also use it as a means to demonstrate how urban agriculture contributes to the local economy. So. Um, so we have a lot of uh, hands-on education programs that we conduct directly at the garden. The gardens are our foundation of the organization. And through that stems all the other uh, projects or programs I described, uh, such as uh, renewable energy, which uh, involves uh, the use of solar wind, pedal bike technology, and battery packs, uh, uh, nutrition or wellness and nutrition, uh, which really consists of uh, health conscious cooking, uh, how do we preserve uh, foods through the means of canning and also fermenting and uh, eco-art, which is transforming natural and recycled materials into art. So. Um, as far as the workshops, <clears throat> what's your next one coming, or do you have uh, one coming up or uh, one that recently happened? That, uh, yeah, so, and so in addition to all of those, uh, uh, we we'll call the, the pillars of you know, science sustainability, uh, urban ag, renewable energy, and so forth. Uh, we have uh, monthly uh, workshops uh, under our, our sustainable living lecture series. And these workshops occur monthly. Um, they happen in collaboration with local professionals and uh, uh, local organizations that allow us to have indoor space as well to mm -hmm. host some of these workshops. Um, so. Starting from March, going on all the way until November, mm -hmm. each month we'll have a different workshop. Okay. Around, oh, so it's monthly. Yeah, That's it's good. monthly around okay. a sustainable living practice. So March was how to grow produce uh, indoors with or without soil. Uh, April um, was supposed to be um, uh, economic literacy and financial freedom. Mm. But it got pushed back into this month of May. Okay. So we had to move things around. And you have an emailing list. I know this because I remember that workshop coming into my email. Yeah. The economic yes. and financial literacy. Yeah. 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 So, so anybody watching wants to sign up, you're in the Newark area. There's an email list too. That's right. And they can also go to our website, uh, sasglocal.com. You know, sasglocal.com. And then okay. they can subscribe and be a part of the uh, listserv and get all the information that I'm sharing on this video today. You know? uh, okay. All right, yeah, and I'll definitely post that with this video. I'll awesome. put sasg.local. Sasg local. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. 
Uh, do you want to say more? I, yeah. I mean, there's a lot more to say. Yeah. I just don't know where I should, you know, <laughs> what areas I should touch on, you know. Um, um, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll say this for you. Tobias does have to actually get right back to it. He took out time of his, uh, his busy day, and it's Memorial Day, too, so mm -hmm. a lot of you have off today. That's true. He, he's got to go in, and they're in, actually installing some yeah, solar so, panels. Yeah, well, so, so it's a local, a um, um, couple of lo local engineers here in, um, that I collaborate with. One... Um, a uh, guy's name is uh, Amado, uh, and Amado uh, uh, is uh, originally from Mexico, but mm -hmm. uh, he's um, been assisting me in the garden with uh, just building raised beds and building structures uh, to make the, the garden more um, effective. And um, so we were um, trying to operate some, some high-powered high tools with some of the battery packs that I have, and um, oh, this is one of the engineers here. Let me just okay, yeah, yeah. Damien. All right, we're back on. Yeah, so um, um, so we were trying to operate some um high-powered uh electric electrical tools uh, at the garden, and the it seems that bad the amps of these uh, high-powered tools were too uh high mm -hmm. for the uh, battery pack. That I had, so that prompted me to have to reach out to the solar technician, electrical engineer Damien DeCaris, who um, is more, way far more knowledgeable about this stuff than I am, uh, to um, come and look at the the tools and also the technology that I have to see what we can do to kind of like um, upscale the t the technology that I have to, okay. to handle these high power tools. Okay. Um, so we're trying to come off of, because it caused a model to have to use his gas generator. And my goal is to come off that and to use our sources of renewable energy. Yeah, okay. Um, so now we're going to troubleshoot that today. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> a, that's a definitely the science part, too, of the sustainability, yeah, well, utilizing technology to uh, Absolutely. get so, higher power. Yeah, so like, you know, so... And so I'll just elaborate a little more on, on a couple of things. So, sure. Um, first, with urban agriculture and then the, the community gardens and urban farms, um, we are, um, you know, one of the things that I don't do is um, I don't lease or assign beds or plots mm -hmm. to people, right? And this is uh, it's probably why um, there's such a low count of people like attaching themselves to the gardens, you know, that I manage because people have uh, grown into this um, or become indoctrinated into this mindset of this is my ownership property. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I thought that's what you yeah. yeah. So and we had and that's not that is not our natural state of, you know, being a community, mm -hmm. a communal gathering and all yeah. stuff. you know the sense of ownership is, is is spilled over from home ownership car ownership to like you know how you even operate community gardens you know yeah like, how is that community yeah if all you're concerned about is this one plot um that you're concerned about while everything else around you is just falling apart so i tell people i says well look there's for instance you know 15 plots you know a garden base and a variety of produce is being grown uh, throughout this entire space, you can benefit from the harvest of everything that's being grown. Um, all you have to do is just, you know, as you find time to come, um, just help me with the upkeep of the entire garden, not just one Specific plot. Right? plot yeah. um, so, so that's my approach of community uh, garden. Uh, not assigning beds, but saying, you know, what can we grow in this space? How can we maximize the growing space? Mm -hmm. So it's beneficial uh, for all of us, you know? And then we introduce an entrepreneurship component to it where now, you know, a couple of restaurants and chefs, they reached out to me wanting to purchase some of this food because we don't use any, um, so we use, we take the organic approach of growing mm -hmm. um, food. So, so now he says, well, you know, uh, let's set aside a portion of the food that's grown in this community space, this community garden, to uh, sell to restaurants and chefs um, that can go back into the garden so we can become a little more sustainable so we don't have to constantly rely on 
um, other sources such as you know grants and donations. Mm -hmm. um, we can actually demonstrate how what we're doing contributes to the local economy as well. You know? uh, and then with the renewable energy, solar wind, pedal bike technology, and battery packs, <clears throat> when I interact with students um, across uh, uh, cities, really, you know, um, and ask how many people interact with this technology on a daily basis, if any hands go up, it's probably one. You know, because we're so disconnected to the sources of renewable energy. And I take a grassroots approach on this. You know? So I do demonstrations and workshops on how beneficial this technology is in our everyday life, what it can be used for, how to apply it, um, versus people being engaged with it by seeing a solar panel on a light pole or seeing a solar panel at a meter station where it doesn't serve their uh, direct interests. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of make it practical um, and apply it into our everyday use through workshops and presentations. You know? um, so that's my approach to this. All right, great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was good. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Okay.